died. It died? What do you mean? Like, I was going and getting things free. No way. Welcome back to New Zero Land. This episode took forever to edit, so I hope you guys wanted a long one. Let's go, in and out, 20 minutes adventure. Our plan was to ride from Invercargill to Christchurch, but instead of going straight up the coast, we had to cut into the countryside for some fun twisties and the icy blue Lake Tekapo. But first, we're gonna ride all the way down to the southern tip of the South Island. We've been riding south for 11 days and we still weren't at the bottom. There were still another 25 k's to ride. This town called Bluff, all the way at the end, is one of those places you have to visit just to see what's down there. Whoa. Oh, here we go. Oh, that's it. That is it. Made it to day 12. We're at the bottom of the South Island in a place called Bluff. Yeah. This is Sterling Point as far south as you can ride. This is where the road stops. And then beyond this, the third island of New Zealand. Can Bet you didn't it? know there were three. Can you see it from here? Oh. Actually, it looks like there's a bunch of it. And Dog Island, six kilometers that way. Who knew that there was a dog island? There's no future on Trash Island. <laughs> Sweet, all right. Oh, made it to the bottom. Super exciting. That was really cool. And I know it was just like a parking lot with a pole and some signs, but it feels really special to know that you've ridden as far as you can. You know, like we went all the way to the end of the country, as far as the road goes. And I went on an electric bike. And check this out, this is gonna blow your minds. There's a charging station down here. Can you believe that? This is one of the southernmost DC charging stations in the country. I think only Curio Bay is lower. And I want to say these are the most southern charging stations in the world. Maybe? Ewan? Charlie? Any DC stations in Ushuaia? We backtracked up to Invercargill because there was a place every motorcyclist told us we had to visit. Motorcycle Mecca. So right off the bat, number one of ten Britons. That is insane. Carbon everything. Jen's getting in a 1934 sidecar. You need, you need a scarf and some goggles. A shifter. Kung Fu shift. Um, clutch, I guess. But then you're shifting the maybe that's a, or maybe the foot clutch. This oh, one. maybe that's what that thing is. Okay. Maybe this one in the front. I don't know. Should we put this on the zero? <laughs> so this is an original aerial. We know aerial for the aerial Adam, which is that race car from Top Gear where Jeremy Clarkson uh, has the he has the face that's like like that. It's so quick it can destroy your entire face. Not that aerial. <laughs> so yeah, they used to make motorcycles. They originally made motorcycles and then they made cars. And now they make motorcycles again. Which is awesome. They just need to... Yes. <laughs> oh, my heart. <laughs> Motocampo. I need this in my life. Pop up headlights on a motorcycle. That's crazy. Suzuki, you crazy. This place is truly motorcycle mecca. It's three stories of history with such an amazing collection of bikes. There were so many Britons, more Britons than I knew existed. Sweet old race bikes. There's a replica shell of the world's fastest Indian you can sit in. That guy. They even have Messerschmitt. <laughs> Only thing they're missing is an electric bike. Then again, all the electrics are out on the roads and the gas bikes are in the museum. I guess we'll have to get used to that. I stopped at the charging station in Invercargill for a top up before heading to Gore. I know I just charged in Bluff and now Invercargill and I have to charge two more times today. So it probably seems like most of my trip has been waiting for the bike to charge, right? But here's what probably doesn't come across in the video. My stop in Bluff was only eight minutes. 
This one in Invercargill was 10 minutes. It probably seems like I'm always charging, but that's just my fault for shooting so much footage at charging stations. I don't know, I just find these little charging checkpoints really interesting. But in reality, we don't spend that much time there. At our next stop in Gore, as soon as I plugged in, somebody came up to check out the bike. She was just a mine. My rod. What's up with the orange beanie, you might ask? Well, I got this in Queenstown, and I like it. So, there's that. So, a quick stop in Gore, and then we're gonna ride to Balclutha. Bal Balclutha, I guess, yeah. Cthulhu. And then, from there to Dunedin, so just one more stop of the day. So, I think we'll, th we'll get some food at New World, just because we're at New World, and it's super cheap and super easy here. And then, uh, yeah. Next stop is Balclutha and our motel. So I'm getting pretty sick of this. The Triumph would not start on its own. We tried push starting it, didn't work. Um, a really nice guy came over and helped me push a couple times. We tried it in second gear, third gear, would not start at all. Uh, after a little while, the dash wouldn't even turn on. So the battery is completely toast. And then a guy in his truck drove by and said, hey, do you guys need help? And so we jump started it. I know you're not supposed to jump start motorcycle batteries, but at this point I really don't care. Just just get the bike running. And so the plan is now, I hate this, but I'm gonna stop and charge and Jen is gonna continue riding on alone to Dunedin. So we're gonna split up for a short amount of time. She's gonna go straight because she has enough fuel to get to the motel in Dunedin. And I'm gonna stop and charge up for as short of a stop as I need because it's only like 50 k's more to Dunedin and then I'm gonna meet her there. So, it just, uh, it just sucks. It really sucks. I hate it. I did not expect any of this to happen. Like, it, I know it seems like I'm trying to bash on gas bikes, but it's crazy how important the battery is to a gas bike. If your battery is low voltage, then it runs like crap, and if your battery is dead, you can't even start your bike. So everything needs batteries, guys. But when your battery relies on a gas engine to charge it, that's when things don't work. So you might as well just get rid of the gas engine and make the whole thing a battery. Because I haven't had any problems. All right, see you later. Bye-bye, see you soon. And this is where we part ways. I'm gonna find a charging station and stop for just to get back up to 80%. That should be all I need. And Jen will keep riding to the needed. I really hope things get easier from here on out. EV this way. Um, yeah, whatever. Let's just back up. I have to say, Two things I did not realize I could live without on a motorcycle. Reverse and cruise control. It's just so nice. Beep. 80%. All right, well, I'm at the warehouse in Balclutha. I have no idea how to pronounce this, sorry. Uh, I'm charging up, almost done charging, about to hit the road again. Hopefully Jen is on her way without any troubles with the bike and uh, I'll see her in Dunedin pretty soon. It's just a, just a crazy day and I hope this doesn't have to happen again. I rode as fast as I could to get to Jen. All I could hope was that she made it to Dunedin without breaking down. Made it to Dunedin and I haven't seen Jen. She hasn't broken down on the side of the road so that means that she probably made it too. And I still have 20% battery, which doesn't really make sense for how fast I was riding. <laughs> Maybe the faster you ride, the better the aerodynamics are working. So it makes sense to go even faster than normal fast. Am I trying to justify speeding? <laughs> Sorry, officer. I was trying to be more efficient. There's Jen. Hello. How's it going? Good. Run out of gas? It died. It died. Now we've made it to that clip from the intro. At this point, we knew either the charging system was bad or the battery needed to be replaced. But the engine was also overheating, so we had no idea what caused it to shut off or if it was finally dead. 
If there was any bright side to the problems we were having, it was all the friendly strangers who went out of their way to help us. Somebody saw Jen on the side of the road and pulled over to see if she was okay. Then she offered to carry our bags to the motel. Seriously, people down here have been so awesome. So the Triumph is dead. I wonder what happens. I wonder if all those high speed hills and stuff overheated it, maybe? Um, I don't know, that's really concerning. I guess to be continued on that Triumph story. Thanks so much. <laughs> really appreciate it. We decided to go for a walk and figure out what to do. If the Triumph was truly dead, we'd have to find an alternative. Two wheel drive, Jen. Trading trade the Triumph for one of these. It's white. I could, could I pedal on it? Could I help push it? No, there's no pedals. Mm. Dual electric drive. How cool is that? How much is it? Eight grand. Mm. Has 120k range. Oh, that's not bad. Top speed of 50k is an hour. No, it only weighs 65 kilos. Easy. Of that is the <laughs> Pretty sweet. Upco. Made in New Zealand. Not sponsored at all. As cool as the Upco was, it would never make it. However, buying a new bike to finish the trip could be an option. But today is Sunday, so bike shops are closed. Tomorrow's Monday, so bike shops are also closed. So we can't like go and trade it in for something to continue the trip. Um, we there could was just. Two thousand over there. Though. The, <laughs> can't buy a car. <laughs> And if, if we buy a used bike, then it could have its own set of problems. And then also, what do we do with the Triumph? So it's one of those things like we're in Dunedin and like, do we cancel our trip tomorrow to Lake Tekapo and just hang out here for a couple days and try and sort something out? Or I don't know, we're going to try and get the bike running and see if it starts. Otherwise, um, we bought this, uh, where is it? This, this power bank thing. That it's basically a USB powered battery with this little custom hookup to battery clamps. It's like a like a mobile uh, portable jump super start. small jump starter. Yeah. So so hopefully that'll help get us to where we need to go. Because the bat like the bike is gonna die uh, several more times on this trip. But as long as we have a jump starter, totally fine. That jump starter battery worked like a charm. What we didn't realize at the time was that it only had five or six jump starts in it. That was a problem for the future though. We heard that Dunedin had New Zealand's only official castle, and it just so happened to be on a fun windy road. It was pretty expensive to visit the castle, but it was like, what are you gonna do? You came all this way, and it's the only castle in the country, so they can kind of charge whatever they want. That said, we felt the views alone were worth it. Way up on the very top of the hill overlooking the rest of Dunedin. The castle itself felt like a mini version of Hearst Castle way way smaller and without the pool but with the creepiness of winchester mystery house if you're into dark twisted history and places that are obviously haunted definitely check it out this castle is severely lacking in the garage space visit the castle check have lunch in the castle check we headed back to dunedin and i got a quick charge only 11 minutes and little did i know this would be the last charge i'd pay for for the rest of the day it took a little while to jumpstart the Triumph this time, but I'm so happy it works. And you know, things could be worse. It could be raining, it could be cold. So, keeping our spirits high. Now, we're gonna ride up north, up the coast to uh, Hampton. Hampton? Hampton. <laughs> it's just north of the Mo Rocky boulders. So, we'll see what those are like. All these years living in New Zealand, I still can't pronounce anything right. But as it turns out, the Moraki boulders are located at Jabba's Palace, which is all the way up on top of a cliff, and the hike down to the rocks looked insane. So we just decided, yeah, we're not doing that. Nobody cares about rocks. Instead, we went and bought some animal food because there's some animals right by the parking lot. I've never seen Jen more excited. <sighs> Jen 
with the animals so I can go charge up down the road. Just so we didn't have to jump start the Triumph twice because that was already getting old. So something that me and Jen were just talking about was the Moraki Boulders place, right? That's somewhere where everybody wants to stop. Everybody's going to stop there. And so why not put the charging station there? Because you're going to spend time there. It makes sense to put the charging station there, not a five minute ride away. It'd be really cool and really convenient if the charging stations were where you wanted to stop. And that's part of the selling point of electric vehicles for some people, you know, where you can stop and uh, while you charge, you can go for a hike or you can stop at a cafe. You know, this, you don't have to hang out by your car while you pump gas kind of thing. Although, I have to say, as I'm complaining about the location of this, this station is free. And I did not expect a free station, so that's pretty cool. To our surprise, the next charging station in Kurao was free too. We passed through all these little towns that you would never even think to stop at. They're all kind of the same. You know, you have your corner store, your church with attached cemetery, your local bar, restaurant thing. Uh, but this one has a charging station. And I'm gonna use it. I'm really liking how quiet these stations are compared to the, the other high pitch, like high frequency, annoying sounds of the, the normal DC stations. These are nice. They're just like a little subtle hum. And since it's free, um, I might as well just wait here until it charges fully, right? Like, why not? Okay, bike's fully charged. Thank you, Kurao. This guy came by and told us how to pronounce the town's name. Um, we said, yeah, there's, there's a bunch of charging stations all over the place. And the next town with a station like this is, uh, we would say Omarama, but he said Omarama. Um, why would anyone think that that's how you pronounce it? So we're skipping that town and going straight to Twizel because that's a cool name. And from then on, just straight to Lake Tekapo. So let's go. Okay, lots and lots of charging stops, I know. But we loved having a reason to stop in these little towns that we'd otherwise ride straight through. Also, I'll stop anywhere if the charging is free. And I think the reason charging was free down here, aside from the incentive to go electric, was that this area is all hydro-powered. You can see a dam over there on the right. Believe it or not, 100% of the electricity on the South Island comes from renewable sources like these dams. So if anybody tries to tell you it's impossible to power a country renewably, I present to you New Zealand. We got to Twizel and the charging was free again. I'll talk about how much this trip costs at the end of the series, but when it comes to free charging, it doesn't matter how fuel efficient your gas bike is, electric will always win. I just went over to refuel the Triumph. That was 20 bucks. <laughs> and we're about to jump start it and hit the road again, but I just realized that I haven't paid for charging since Dunedin. So today we're gonna ride like 300 Ks and I won't have paid for charging at all. How cool is that? You get used to this. Suddenly, this spectacular road had an equally spectacular view, and we had to pull over for photos. We kept riding to Lake Tekapo and called it a night. The Triumph was still alive, despite its best efforts to die. But don't worry, that won't last long. Well, that was far too much excitement for one day. We saw a bunny! We saw a bunny. <laughs> yeah. And we fed alpacas? <laughs> yeah. We fed a deer. <laughs> um, saw a castle, just to sum up quickly the day, road, amazing roads, amazing roads, went really fast, jump started the Triumph a million times, yeah. um, charged for free a lot, and now we're in Lake Tekapo. Just Aww. beautiful. Anyway, thanks for watching, see you guys next time, bye bye.